How's it going everyone? Maximilian here, and you're watching Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Season 2, and we're on Episode 15. So following up from last week, there was this uh, little bit glimmer of hope that there could be more Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on the horizon. Had a bunch of folks uh, go to Twitter for some accounts of some guys at Marvel to let them know that we would like to see more of this game, because Capcom definitely knows it's getting to the other side of the argument into it. And it got a pretty big response. Uh, supposedly a lot of folks did go to Twitter, did let them know, and they have responded and they have said that we are totally listening to you guys, we'll pass it along, and we'll see what goes from there. So uh, there is hope that we might actually see some Ultimate Marvel 3 updated in the future, if not a completely new expansion. Uh, but here's what I wanted to ask you guys. When it comes to how they were doing things with Street Fighter Cross Tech and then how they potentially were doing things with Ultimate Marvel 3 and Street Fighter 4, Capcom's got this track record of all these games that they handle DLC differently almost for everyone. Uh, what, I, what I'm curious is, do, how do people want to see the DLC for these games? I personally would just like them to release, like, to release an, a disc update. Like, I don't, I don't care if it's, like, as DLC or whatever. I, whatever gets it to us faster, I think, is the most important. But if they did, like, a full disc update where they actually improved, oh my god, if they improved the online, if they added a few more characters, if they rebalanced the entire cast, I think that would be really good. And they charged, like, you know, the, the lower price point for it, like, I don't know, 30, 30 bucks or something like that. I think that'd be pretty appealing. I, I would personally be the most interested in that, but what do you guys think? Do you think they should do it as DLC or otherwise? Because it's, uh... Pretty important later on to see how Capcom's going to treat fighting games. Uh, I've mentioned this many times before. I think fighting games should be... Uh, I think I was talking about this on our on our playthrough channel, Yo Video Games. I think fighting games should be treated similar to other competitive games like sports games and shooters. Most of the time, these games get a game every single year or they get like a new iteration of the game. So I think Street Fighter or anything that Capcom produces because they have a big fighting game franchise behind them now can do the same thing. Like, if a game is successful, I don't see why after a year you can't make another disc release or you can't make a big DLC release with either that includes new characters, huge adjustments and balance changes and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, after a year, it kind of sits amongst the community and it gets its time to sit in your stomach and you get to, you know, flush out the game. And after one year, you get to get something new. You get to completely come back to a new game or revisit a game that you might have been bored with and might give you something new to play. And I think one year's time frame is perfect. Uh, it works very well for shooters. It has obviously worked well for sports games. And I don't see why it can't work for fighting games either, so... Just, just a thought of mine. Uh, if you guys agree with me, please let me know. I, I would have no problem actually spending money on a yearly update to fighting game titles as long as that update was somewhat significant and expanded on the game and improved the things the community wanted more about it. My god, if they fixed Ultimate Marvel 3's online and they put like Street Fighter Cross Tech and Netcode into it, it'd be fan-freaking-tastic. I can't even tell you how happy I would be. So, moving it along, there's another thing I wanted to talk about before we start getting into um, a little bit of the topic of this episode, which is talking about the top three in this game, uh, and how that's kind of evolved over some time. It's uh, SoCal Regionals. So, SoCal Regionals is the big premiere fighting game tournament that's happening this weekend, and there's going to be a multitude of games, probably the most players of any, of any major for uh, 2013 yet, even though that's not saying much because we just started. But it's going to be really big. It's going to be absolutely huge. I was actually making personal plans and obligations to get out to SoCal Regionals because it's fairly local to where I live. And sadly, every time I try to do this, these things land on weekends where I feel like I'm the most busy. Uh, I was going to go, I was going to go, and then I get a deadline, and now I can't go. So it's a total bummer, but if you guys want to check out some crazy Ultimate Marvel action, I think on Saturday night this week, they're going to be having exhibition matches between uh, individual players and like first to tens. So things like NorCal versus SoCal, like fighting game, uh, fighting game TV versus Wednesday Night Fights crew, and all these individual players will be going at it um, in these first to ten sets. And besides that, there's going to be a uh, probably the most Marvel competition in a very long, long time. And it's going to be an interesting Grand Finals. I think, uh, I don't know, I have a funny feeling that Justin Wong is going to make it really far this time. And I also have a funny feeling it might be Justin and Filipino champs somewhere really deep in the top eight. I'm not too sure, but it, uh, it definitely should be an interesting one. And we'll see how it goes. If you guys want to watch that and if you want to keep up with all the marvelous updates and how the game is competing as far as a competitive level and what characters are the best and stuff like that, you definitely want to check this out. And you can go to twitch.com slash leveluplive. I believe, or you can just Google Level Up Live and you can get the scoop on what's going on with SoCal Regionals. So, moving into our topic at hand, uh, now that we got some of that news out of the way. 
talking about the best characters in this game. So this has evolved quite a bit, and we talked about this in a previous episode of Ultimate Marvel 3 The Online Warrior. Uh, and I think it's changed quite a bit. Pre previously, I got, like, the community to come in and put some votes down, and we were able to get, like, a top ten list of the best characters in the game, or a top five, or something like that. It was quite a while ago, and there were some characters on there that definitely were very good, and but has evolved to the point of which Ultimate Marvel 3 has been out for just about over a year now, and it's kind of compared to the point of which, like, it's it, the, the amount of level and the amount of and technology and the amount of all the crazy stuff that's been discovered in this game is the equivalent of Marvel 2 being out for like five or six years. It's literally that crazy because back in the day, those games did not have the resources of everyone putting up videos, everyone putting up strategy guides, and all this information constantly available to all players. Like, it's absolutely crazy. I don't think the TAC glitch without, you know, without, with the game came out like ten years ago, the TAC infinite glitch and all that stuff probably wouldn't have been discovered for a very long time. Hell, it was not even discovered in the original Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And when we look at the individual characters, this is kind of an interesting story. I think um, if we're going to talk about the, the top three characters, starting in at number three in my personal opinion, I think the third best character in this game is Doctor Doom. The reason being, Doctor Doom is a fairly good solo character. Sure, he has his bad matchups, but he's still really good alone, and with certain assists, he's extremely powerful, like Ami and other lockdown assists. He's extremely, extremely easy to use once you actually get the hang of him. He can actually be somewhat intermediate at first, but once you start to get the hang of his moves and his movement, he's a lot different than every other character in the game because of the hopping up and down. But once you once you get a hold of it, man, you're you're given access to 800k plus damaging combos in the corner and a ton of crazy synergy as a result of TAC combos and hard knockdowns and moving around with other specific characters like Strider. Anybody else that causes a hard knockdown makes Doom so damn good that he's freaking crazy. And that's just talking about him as a point character. As a DHC and as a assist character, well, as a DHC character first, he's pretty good. All things considered, finger lasers is an extremely good move to DHC from because it does hit off the ground, it hits in the air, and it hits on the ground. And you also have Sphere Flame, which can be DHC with other certain things like, you know, certain Dante supers and stuff like that. Now, that's pretty good synergy, all things considered, you also have a character that has a level 3 that is over 450,000 points of damage. We all know Doom is good alone, but when it comes to the assists is where this character really shines. All three of Doom's assists have proven to be, time and time again, and over the past year, some of the three best assists in the game. Probably the best unique beam assist in this game is Magneto's, uh, is Magneto's beam assist, but Doom's is fairly good because of its really high damage output and of its projectile durability. Also. Hidden Missiles proves once and once again that this assist is absolutely amazing, and it's still one of the best for top-level high competition. Especially in top-level high competition, you see a lot of keep-away teams now, which is something you didn't expect coming from the days of Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and it really is this way. The people that are able to do keep-away or manage keep-away teams end up being the most proficient in this game. Even though it's not the most fun to watch, and even though a lot of people despise it, and I don't personally enjoy like it myself, it wins. And you really can't complain about something that wins, or you can complain about it, you don't have to like it, but the people that are winning are going to copy other people that are winning. What's unique about Ultimate Marvel 3 is that the basic keepaway of this game, especially with Doom using like Dormammu on point or something like that, is that with hidden missiles, you got to be really careful. Certain things will counter it hard. Any characters that have beam supers or stuff like that can counter this stuff extremely easily with a DHC especially to make it safe. So the one thing that makes hidden missiles amazing is the fact that it throws so many missiles out. It's a combo breaker, it's a combo extender, and it's a spacing tool. It makes Doom so good. Along with Plasma Beam, one of the best beam assists, and along with Molecular Shield being a pretty decent shield assist. It's not your regular projectile because it actually does protect Doom for a little while against certain projectiles that have lower durability. So, Dr. Doom, man, you don't want to F with this guy. Once you get good with them, you have a character that will probably be fit place on almost every single team, which is why you see him so much. Moving along, I think the second best character in Ultimate Marvel 3 is probably Zero. Now, this did not change very much. I think Zero was actually the number one character in the previous tier list we were talking about. Now that we've come this far, when you see Zero players that do extremely proficient with Zero, you really see why this character is so good. 
Um, most notably, character has the ability to hit confirm from anywhere on the screen at any point, especially with select assists. His mix-up potential is absolutely crazy, and he's pretty much the greatest on-point character in this game because he can kill anybody. He gains quite enough meter during any of his combos to, get, to build enough meter to go into his shadow super that allows him to pretty much lightning loop anybody in a corner until death. And even recently, there's been newer lightning loops that have been discovered for Zero that actually make it easier than previous ones. There's been some debate and some debacle about lightning loops on the right side compared to lightning loops on the left side not actually being or being more difficult one to the other. And a lot of players find this naturally uh, kind of kind of challenging, and they don't do that stuff with Zero on one side, and they specifically try to get Zero to the other side that they're better at. But there's been other stuff that's recently been found that actually makes lightning loops not nearly as hard. They don't require you to do a tiger knee motion. For you guys that don't know, a tiger knee motion is doing a, a jump and then immediately doing another attack while in the air. And you can usually combine a down to upward move to do something like that. Like if you go from down to an upward attack really fast, so that's so it's a half circle up with like a punch attack, that you're technically doing a hyper jump air fireball at that point. You can do that with a lot of stuff. This is also known as the hyper viper beam motion from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And Zero has to do like this uh, this immediate hyper jump and then go into a Shoryuken motion which can be pretty challenging to get lightning loops done. And with this new one he doesn't actually have to do that. So until people start adopting this new strategy, Zero is going to be that much more easy for people to use. When it comes to uh, assists for Zero, He's not that amazing when it comes to assists. He's not meant to be an assist character by any means. Sure, you can extend certain things with his combos, but what makes Zero the most deadly is that he quite literally, almost with any meter, can kill uh, a, a very good majority, 80% of the cast, from anywhere on the screen at any time. That is so deadly, and when you see Zeros actually hit all their confirms, get a 100% percentage of accuracy when they're actually going for all of their combos and all this stuff, and if you see Zeros properly space things out with select assists, it's just like, what are you supposed to do against this? There is light at the end of the tunnel. There has been some recent stuff that has shown up that you can actually punish after his fully charged buster because it does not cause that much hit stun. So a lot of people aren't seeing that, and once you start taking advantage of that, there's maybe a chance that Zero might drop down the tier list just an eensy bit. But who knows? Right now, he's so extremely good. The only shocking thing is that you don't see this character winning majors very often. You see him extremely good in the right hands, but he's such a difficult-to-use character when it comes to full execution and hitting all your marks that, until we get that one guy that is so damn amazing with Zero, we're finally going to see, yeah, this is absolutely the best character in the game. So moving on to number one. The best character in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, probably as of mid-January 2013, is Virgil. And how appropriate considering all the Devil May Cry drama that has been happening as of late. Although the Virgil in this game is definitely reminiscent of an old, cheap Virgil just like he is in UMVC 3. Uh, I think if we discussed Virgil before, I'm going to state similar facts. Virgil beats out so many tactics, it's absolutely crazy. Um, he definitely is one of those characters that shows very hard that he is a result of a game that was not balanced very much. Virgil was an, an inclusion in Ultimate Marvel 3, was not in the original Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and never got accepted to a huge balance patch or adjustment like many of the characters did in the original vanilla Marvel 3 compared to the new one that came out. So, if this game received a big title update over some time, you better believe that Virgil's going to be one of those characters that's going to get nerfed extremely hard when it comes to certain, cer certain parts of his tactics and stuff like that. Some of those tactics being, he has a downward attack in the air, which is called Helmbreaker, that is extremely safe in many situations, causes a hard knockdown, and leaves, leads to almost death setups for many characters because of another tactic, his sword loops. Uh, once you get good at sword loops, it's one of those things like lightning loops that's pretty difficult to pull off, but they cause so much hit stun in this game. There's one of these things where certain characters like Dante and Virgil, as a, as a really good example, which is funny that it's these two characters, hit stun is this thing that, that happens over time, and hit stun decay is something that happens over the flow of a combo, where if the combo gets too long, the hit stun during all your hits begins to decay away and it becomes harder and harder to execute the combo. And Virgil has several moves that actually ignore hit stun decay and do a constant amount of hit stun no matter how long the combo is. 
I don't know who came up with this idea, but it is not good. When it comes to certain characters like Virgil, it makes him that much more effective for doing things like quote-unquote sword loops that allow him to loop one of his supers over and over and over again with quite a bit of practice and some specific timing. When it comes to other things about Virgil besides his really powerful supers, his amazing normals, his mix-up ability, and all this crazy stuff, Virgil's a pretty damn good assist character. If you guys have not seen, Rapid Slash is one of the better assists in this game for combo extension, especially with characters like Strider, like Spencer, almost anybody can include Rapid Slash in one of their combos to extend damage for that point character. Virgil does really fit the bill. He has all of the things necessary to make a character not exactly completely effing broken, but he does take some skill. And he's one of the characters that sits on the upper echelon of this game because of his ease of usability. Once you get better at him, you start learning things like sword loops, and once you start integrating into your, into your team and you start managing him with other characters, you start to find a lot of synergy. And DHCing into Virgil is absolutely amazing as well, because once you get good at those sword loops, DHC right into the guy, he can teleport from almost anywhere on the screen into the character, and bam, you probably have a dead fighter at the end of that. So Virgil is my number one character in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 as of January 2013. We'll see if that changes anytime soon. There's other characters on here that could potentially be absolutely amazing, like Spencer, like Morgan, but what you probably have to consider is that these characters by themselves, when you consider them, probably need somebody else to make them good. And when it comes to Doctor Doom, when it comes to Zero, when it comes to Virgil, all three of these characters have something that makes them amazing. Doctor Doom is a great on-point character, is a great character in himself, and has three of the best assists in the game. Zero is the best point character by all means and can kill any Freddy from any distance of any part of the screen if you're good. And Virgil has an amazing assist, great for team synergy, and he has the ability to do something very similar to Zero, although not quite as effective, but he's very close in that regard, and his ease of usability makes him that much better and that much higher on a tier list. So let me know what you guys think about your top three characters in this game in the current state of high-level competitive Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, or what you consider in the characters that you play on a daily basis online, or whatnot. Until next time, thank you guys very much for watching, and if you have any questions regarding your play of Ultimate Marvel 3, or any questions in general reg regarding the community or the game, please leave a comment below and I'll try to tackle them in a later episode of The Online Warrior. My name is Max, and I'll see you guys next week. Is that really all you've got?